Aloha golfers. Welcome to Golf in the Cosmos. I'm Kevin Robowski. This is episode number eight, and we're talking all things Mac O'Grady and Morad. So first, a brief update on my first proposed interview was going to be with Zavin Manjakian. And Zavin is in Armenia, and it took me a long time to get his contact information. Eventually I did. I was able to write to him. He did respond. And unfortunately, he does not want to comment on Mac O'Grady or the Morad project, respectfully. So he had a lot of positive things to say about Mac and uh, did talk about Mac's genius and his virtuosity as a player and his ability to communicate his swing ideas. Uh, Zavin is a, uh, was a dentist in Los Angeles, California when Mac met him, but Zavin also has a degree in biology and sort of a, maybe an expertise in uh, kinesthesiology. And so Zavin helped Mac with the medical terminology. And I think that's where Mac got a lot of his, um, you know, sort of uh, medical uh, communication from. Unfortunately, this backlashed a little bit on Mac because Mac became labeled too technical. But a lot of the background is from Zavin. And uh, so I'll be looking to get another guest and uh, hopefully one from that 86, 87 era. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I have another gem of a video uh, from 1987 for you. And this is the first part of a three-part series that features Dave Stockton. Dave Stockton, renowned putting coach, um, victorious captain of the Ryder Cup United States team, War by the Shore and student of Mac O'Grady, believe it or not, as well as his sons at this era. So this is 1987. Mac is giving a lesson to Dave Stockton and Mark File. And Mark also was a PGA Tour player and part of the program. And uh, you can see Mac demonstrating and swinging with them in sync. So it's very interesting to see their bodies and how far they come along in, in the progression of using the Morad principles. At this time, Mac is, again, 86, 87. He's, he's less strict, less dogmatic, uh, which is very refreshing. His attitude seems very more fun and lighthearted. There's lightness to his coaching at this time, and, and, and there's a flexibility in his coaching in terms of, you'll hear him say, well, it depends a little bit on the person and the body type. So this was very much, I think, unique to the 80s sort of style of teaching and, um, and very refreshing. Um, Again, what you'll see in this video is sort of the normal um, 86, 87 ideas. Uh, he's gonna start off with 40, 60, 80, 100 drill. So if you're not doing this drill, you're not doing the 86 Morad swing. This is a huge part of what he taught. So basically you, you can learn the positioning a lot quicker doing this drill especially when you can um, sort of compare, you'll be able to incorporate, I think, the swing mechanics of the 86, 87 swing a lot easier in the 40 and especially the 60% effort or rotation speed swing. And you can be able to compare one to the other. It gets increasingly difficult, but um, certainly the 40 to 60% you can you can do a lot of what he says, I think, fairly easily and easy on the brain. And that you'll see that in this video, Mac is swinging so freely without much thought. Again, it really looks like a system that frees up the brain and frees up the body. And of course, you know, they're swinging on account and you, know, you don't have a lot of time to think. 
and uh, again, that's also incorporates sort of this idea of uh, less conscious thought when you swing. And so um, we move on to again the situation where the hands are low and feeling like they are under this sort of imaginary table or shaft. So let's say your hands are maybe 30 inches from the ground. You have a sort of horizontal line that, that's, that's 30 inches from the ground. We're gonna go back, P1 to P2, keep it under this uh, imaginary shaft, and then come back down and return your golf club right back underneath that shaft, pretty much trying to bring it back to the original plane that it started on. So that's the idea. And again, it's fairly simple. So not a lot of um, uh, complications there. Um, also, what we'll see here is uh, Mac describing that little firming up. Gabe Stockton asks a question about the right knee, and Mac does talk about how he firms up his lower body right before he swings. I think this is unique to the 86-87 swing, and uh, I think that the knee position was slightly inward, just slightly and that became more outward, or at least neutral, basically knees over the feet in the 90s. But in the 80s, it was just a, 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 a touch pinched in. The other thing you have to look, you have to listen carefully in this uh, aspect of the video, maybe three quarters in, Mac talks about how he hits all his uh, short irons at rotation speed 5.0, and his mid, uh, mid irons, six to seven, so six to seven point oh, which is basically 60 to 70 percent effort. And he tells Dave Stockton he's using, he's hitting a five iron 195 yards at maybe 0.7 and uh, rotation speed. So that's fairly easy and quite far, especially if you think about what the loft would be there in 1987 of a five iron, it's probably close to a um, seven iron today. So, you know, Max generating good power with just um, a, a easy swing, 70%, 60 to 70% effort. And that's synonymous with the rotation speed. So I found that very interesting in this video. Um, Again, it's entertaining, it's lighthearted. Um, it's the first part of a three-part series, so enjoy and uh, send me some feedback if you like. Take care all, we'll see you next week. Bye -bye. I think it really points out that you Okay, so far. Um, going around the center. Let's try uh, 40, 60, 80, 100, okay? okay. This is 40%. 60, here go 80, and then here goes drivers. If you turn from behind, you see that the same tilt and all the same angles, all you're doing is about monitoring the rotation speed. Right. And and all the various the sections, body. what? That's just the whole body. Right. The swing stays the same, it's just the, the, the speed. geometry? Yeah, just yeah. the center. The length of the swing doesn't change. No. Well, I mean, you, you don't you don't take a... You're not thinking about it. I mean, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just monitoring. I'm, I'm sure that if I go 40%, then I'm a little bit shorter than I am if I go up to yeah, 100%. Yeah, right. Sure, sure. sure. But uh, the point here, all you have to do is monitor is the, the rate in which you want to rotate around the center. Where do you set your left knee at address? Address? Where do I set? You mean the amount of flex? How much? No. Is it pointed at the toe, inside the toe? Uh, no, it's not. You know how? See, this is where a lot of Hogan stuff. You know, Hogan never wrote that book. No, see, see, I, my my <laughs> dad taught me. I know he never let me read any golf stuff. Okay. I mean, he was my only teacher, and I believe what he told me. He wouldn't let me read any golf magazine, watch it. So I'm. Okay, good. Well, same so and so, but I've always been opposed to a Haney or somebody that had a theory because, I mean, it's ridiculous, okay? One but, thing I, dis I didn't like what Haney was saying was, that was everything was so much Hogan, 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 as if you know, he sat down with the Messiah. You find out, McCord told me that him and Venturi sat down and got drunk with Hogan and found out that Hogan never wrote the book. Herbert Warren Wynn wrote the book. Yeah, yeah.
And all this stuff about arms being close together, Hogan actually played off to the side. It was like this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And, uh, but the, the, what we're saying is that there's a model. It's all based on your balance centers. Right. Okay, forget well, I Hogan. I buy that. No, but, no, I buy, you know. Forget all this stuff, right? Yeah, see, that's what I mean. I don't know. I'm, right. I'm like brand new. Which is, you know, you get kicked around like I was for so many years. Where do you search? Where do you look yeah. for? Where, what's right, right? So, uh, so to answer your question, how much does the net left knee? Where, I mean, where, it's, is it, is it it's, pointing just inside your toe? I know you turn it out 20 degrees. Left yeah, toe. Exactly. it goes out 20 degrees. Um, so what the knee it's, is? The it's knee funny. You know, Dave, watch. You can, you can, you can. I mean, you can set your legs out here like Seve does a little bit, right? Yeah. The main thing is that uh, they're brought in just a, a few, a few degrees inward, and it's not like. You know, you see Cobra and some of these guys get in here like yeah. this, where the legs Jacob are so close center, together. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Bringing the legs closer and the elbows closer has a way of pinching everything, though you don't have the smooth rotation. The reason I'm asking is I find myself having this chaser, which I don't think I should do. I mean, no, I, no, it I, should I be like inside. It. it should be inside. It should be inside. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Actually, one of the rules, are, the rules we know is that when you set up to the ball, just, I've never said this to him, I've never said this to Keenan also, set up to the ball. Just when you are ready to take the club away, everything should be tightened up to stabilize. Right. Tighten okay. up here. In the lower torso. Because if the lower, listen, if the lower of torso. Just the right or of both feet? Everything. Well, that's the year that I played good. That's why I felt like I just got off the horse. I, mean, I felt like everything I was, should be I mean, just. I felt like I was right here yes, and that was going to stay and I was turning. Yeah. So that Absolute was. must. Good. And if the lower torso gets out, it throws off everything upstairs. Lower torso means the lower six joints. Sure. Lower. Two, three, four, five, six. Those get out of alignment, problems. Because it changes the whole stretch. If you if you set up at a dress and if you if you uh, take the club back and your weight is shifting off, your legs move too much like this. Turn my shoulders 90 degrees. Now my stretch is off. I'm over off my right foot. See, and the center gravity yeah. is over here. Somewhere. Right. That's what messed me up because when I was what? I was following your thing about staying tight. Yeah. I was getting too far behind it. I couldn't get back to where, right. where I was coming from. Well, the other thing is that the next thing you know, you find yourself moving, and if you turn your shoulders 90 degrees, can I see you out of my right eye? Do I still have my depth perception? Yeah. Kind of like, how does Curtis Strange hit it so good? From I don't know. Okay. Curtis is a, Cal Curtis is a hell of an athlete. Yeah. It's, but if somewhere, Curtis just turned 30 years old, 30 to 35, something will happen. Yeah. There's never been anybody to do that after. Well, I, I, I'm amazed of what, yeah. you know. And he's, he has a good instinct for survival, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, let's, let, let, where's my camera here? Let's set this thing up while so much. I know you want to. He can play good. has some hub up to here. His right leg has the right angle. has changed. Oh, off. you mean you mean to come up like this, you mean? I mean, I, no, I'm telling you, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be here while the club's up here. Oh, okay. Like finishing. Yeah, if you if you look at the, the right foot, it's supposed to, you're supposed to go into impact and then rotate around the center up like this. The but mark has to be a little bit off the heel of the one. Uh, yeah, just after impact. Just maybe an impact just a little bit, depends a little bit on the player. If the guy has too much right shoulder going this way, the right heel is way off. The tendency is usually if the right leg straightens out, and then it comes back to the bat position, the shoulder moving too much this way, and not enough that way to move the right knee and the hips over. And then it rotates. So you don't think it's like right? that a problem to get off that foot then. Uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna look at it. Also, this youngster's got a pair of shots from Austin. Yeah, you wanna know something? What? He's left hand. Huh? Never, he's never hit a ball of tennis by him. He's left hand. Should be practicing. Huh? Should be practicing left hand. So I, I just ordered a Taylor made a seven. Should be just out fooling around yeah. and develop the symmetry yeah. and everything else. Right. The guy did that for one year. You know what it's like doing? It's like taking a, an airplane that's assessing it and building the hardware that comes that fifty. Really sophistication right. in the motor neuron, the brain, the balance in the brain. See, that's why I come over a lot. See, this is why you have to try to keep the angle of the left arm feel like it's at a dress. Now, the problem with it is now, if you put your, this grip's got to be towards your fingers. It's up in your palm, you're dead duck soup. That's right. Okay, now, see, this, this, this has got to be open handed. It's got to be more towards the fingers. You know why? Because the fastest that the, you have in your right hand the fingers towards the bottom, called phalanges. Yeah, okay. right hand is there. What? Right hand is there. Pardon me? Yeah, the right hand was sitting there, right? Right, okay. Now, in the, in the left hand, it's up just, it's a little bit higher, more towards the middle. And the reason why is because now, once you get it section six through seven through eight, that's the fastest rate in which it will rotate through So the you're hand. not putting it underneath the pad? No, 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 absolutely, absolutely not. Because hmm. it slows it down. Watch, here's the problem. The more you put it up in the palm, the more it's in the palm, the more that you come down, you can't keep the wrist cut. And then the forearms turn over more. 
the forearms all the way up into your shoulder joints will rotate too much if it's too much in the palm. That's one reason why uh, guys like Watson, what? Okay. So the fat, watch, the fastest rate in which it'll go from section six to seven to eight, also is it's in the fingers, it'll minimize the forearm rotation. You don't, you, there's a slight rotation going on. It's not, if I put it up in the palm, like Watson's got his right hand up like this, it comes here, the whole, you can feel it rotating all the way up to the shoulder. Oh, yeah. What? So it's a big move. And there's stuff about a flat left wrist. Okay. Are you talking about when you hit it or address? Even, even when you try to come back into impact like this, whatever degree of bent you have, you almost want to try to try to maintain it. Okay. Because if this gets a weak left hand like the A, then the forearm turns over too fast on the left. The more this is bent here, the more it uncocks too. And it raises the hands up. So that's that up I feel all the time coming up this way. Go ahead, Mark. Let's put the club shaft up again. Put it on right here. Watch. If I sit up at a dress like here, this thing's going to come in. Go bam. Okay. In your photo sequence I was looking at, it showed you coming into impact. It shows your hands going in a straight line about right here. This picture you show me. Okay. You should try to get it where when you come down to impact, that you feel like the butt of the club is pointing towards your left leg or outside. Yeah, what? It has not contact with the volume. So you, you have it coming here like this, and it's just, it's just yes. radically backing up. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and that means that you don't have the proper pivot to the ball. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to force it back. Yep. Now, see, I had that problem left-handed, where, where the photo sequence we did with golf dodges a year ago. Mm -hmm. le le the right hand, you can see me coming to impact like, yay, right here. Left hand, I'm coming to impact about this back and that. Okay. 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 That'd be a drill for me to work on. Yep. Say, okay. Absolutely. To get in here, it's, it's that the butt of the club, when you set the dress at the top, as you rotate down, you got to feel as if the butt is actually pointing left. Like wow. You're, you've got it backed up too much like this, like kind of hold on to it and cross the line that yeah, way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And instead of being on go, whoosh, and then rotate right around. So one of the things you have to work on here is, uh, uh, like Mark was doing, is that once you go to section two, then up to three, the hands are going inside, then as you come down, you just rotate around the center of the hand, going in perfect circle. And you got to be able to straighten the right arm out the right thing. Alright. Short iron here. Maybe a little leeway here, go ahead. See, that clips more up in here. I mean, more Pitting this out. way as compared to that way. Say again? That club there is more up here in the air, so I'm more on art right. before I'd be laid up. Right. Okay, again. Four. section four, three, two, one, more section three. Okay, just check your arm out. Okay. Pull this a little bit more, a couple more inches. Got you. Good. Ready? Down there. Bring it up. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Bring it up again. Bring it all the way up. Okay, one more time. <laughs> bring it up. Okay, let's bring it this way. And bring it up again. Okay, faster. Bring it up faster. Okay, start to keep it stretched. Okay, ready? Hold it there. Straighten it out more. Okay, seven seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring it up. Hello. Now, Go ahead. If a guy does that, he takes a discipline for an hour a day, trying to get to all the various sections, do both in one way and the other, I just can't believe how much harm he does to them. Mm. The just, just go. You know, I'm thinking about the sections with yeah. Dave, like he knows, he does some on his forward swing. For, yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't let's, know. Uh, let's, have you, let's have you hit some balls here. David, you look like you're ready to pass out. Do you want to get a sandwich? You want me just hitting them? Yep. Because the other swing is I'm not, I'm not monitoring trying. ball flight. I'm just going to go understand. ahead. I'll, Mark, I'll do this with you. Okay.
sit there. Okay, you can have to hit about 10 balls, then we're going to do a complete uh, diagnosis of it. Okay. One more, please. Hasn't he learned that's it? Every time it's one more. <coughs> Makes he's working with a young kid that has a whole lot of swings left. Both red lights on means it's going now. Both lights on, right? Mm-hmm. Way. 
Focus in on just uh, our hips. Maybe about six inches above our nave waistline. For, for, for both of them. Okay. So we can see what we're looking for from behind there. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Okay, Brad. Take care. Good man. Dan. Yeah. That whole time I was up in front of you, I forgot to turn the camera on. No. Yeah. Thousand two, thousand three. This is uh, mid iron. Oh, I try to hit all wedges, nine irons, eight irons, seven irons at about point five oh, five to six oh. No, no one that heavens. Mid irons is always at about seven oh. What's that? Mid irons, That's never over seven. What's that? Six to five irons. Right. About ninety five. But in the long irons, because of the length, the radius, it's three. That was good. Uh, <laughs> Here we go again. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. Okay, one more. The three amigos. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. And, uh, I want you to, let's do a similar test here, ready? Because I want you to do it here. Go to the impact, right? And go up the section line to free yourself until the ball reaches the base end. The moment the ball starts to come down with the apex, the ball comes down and bring your arms back down the second point. Okay, you push that further. Then when the ball hits the ground, then you release yourself the line. Got it? Yeah.